So here we are at E3 and AMD's new gaming horizon event. I'm joined by Wendell. How you doing? Good. I've got the pink bracelet. That's how you know I'm legit. I got oh, the, you're legit too. Yeah. <laughs> got the pink bracelet, flamboyant color. And speaking of these CPUs, we got the 3950X, which was announced today. $749 price tag. I can't help but notice 1950, 2950, 3950. Oh, they've changed the socket. Oh. Oh no, what does that mean that I want I want the more PCIe lanes? What's what's happening? 16 cores on the mainstream. Well, there's actually a story behind that. They told me that the lower core count Threadripper chips didn't sell at all. Yeah. So I no think- No surprises there. So that's what I think they're reasoning. But also with that, you think the next gen of Threadripper chips that are coming in will be at least 24 core? So, I mean, it's gotta be now because they've really upped the core count all around. But Coming into this, I think, right, the main focus was with their Ryzen Zen 2 was gaming, which they labeled out five new SKUs and they added on the 3950X, but they quietly added in the 3200G and the 3400G. <laughs> Did you notice that? Those actually are really good. I think that they're excited for those because those sell a lot. And when I say those sell a lot, those sell a lot, like a lot. And those are going to sell even more. Now the, the 3400G and the, 30, the Ryzen 3 and the Ryzen 5 plus Vega, those are Zen Plus, those are not Zen 2, no seven nanometer, but you get, the, well, yeah. you get the performance bump. And it's soldered, the Ryzen 5. That's right, yeah, I noticed so, that. So more overclock. The 4 core 8 thread had soldered, yeah. So that was that was interesting to see. And they and were, a better cooler. They did, yeah, they put the Spire on that too. Now, speaking of the coolers, the Ryzen 5 3600 gets a Stealth, yeah. And then the X gets a Spire. Yeah. And then all the SKUs above that get the Wraith Max. Prism. Prism, so Prism yeah. Prism. So they get the RGB cooler. So that's, I predicted at Computex, I was calling the 3700X <laughs> to be my favorite. Now that adds even more value that it gets that best stack cooler on it. 329 yeah. and the overclock ability. Uh, Eight core, 16 threads. I mean, and, and you can couple with the B450 too. It's 65 watts, but let's face it, it's not really going to be 65 watts when you overclock the bejesus out of yeah. it, which everyone is going to do because it's the sweet spot. So coming out of today, I still think that's my favorite play going into the new Zen 2. You got eight core, 16 threads. You're going to have that good price point, 329, plus the good cooler now, and the ability to put it on a B450. Even a B350, they were telling me. I think that people that are excited about computing, like, oh, I'm getting a computer, I'm really excited. Uh, yeah, Ryzen 7, but Ryzen 5, the six core yeah. and Ryzen plus Vega. I think those are the ones that are going to make just a scandalous amount of money for AMD. Because yeah, they're so good. I think the Ryzen 5, yeah, 3600 is definitely going to be good. 199 plus seven nanometer. One thing I'm very curious about still though, we have to put them on the test bench, yeah. is the all core overclocks. Yeah. That's a big we don't focus. Know. And that was, they were talking about the topology, the Windows scheduler now. That's, they've said it's been heavily updated in 1903. Yep. Now, I tested 18885 with a Threadripper, and there was a performance uplift there. And so somebody from Microsoft reached out to me and tried it. And I was real salty because Threadripper was not fixed. The 2990 was not fixed, but 7-Zip and some other stuff had a 6 to 9% performance improvement. And that was because of this scheduler fix. I should have dug deeper. I didn't realize, but you need the chipset driver in addition, and that scheduler fix is gonna rise the boat of all Zens. So no matter what Zen you have, it's gonna get better. That's really like- Unless that's, you have a four core Zen, in which well that, case I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I was, I was hoping for that. Like, I was hoping like, look, Microsoft really need to work with AMD to get that scheduler they fixed. They did. And they did, yeah, and yeah. that was the good thing coming out of this news that we got here. Now, I will concede that my fix for the 2990 is going to affect a much smaller number of people than the patch in 1903 affects. The patch in 1903 affects every Zen user except for the four core people. That'd be good. I mean, I'm very curious to see those all core boosts. As I said before, that's the biggest thing for me coming out. The single core boost, I mean, 4.7 gigahertz on the 3950X versus the 3.5 gigahertz all core base. Yeah. That's 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 a big discrepancy of 1.2 gigahertz. Yeah, it's uh, a... <laughs> It's a, well, I mean, I think it's down to the wattage though. So if I throw a giant closed loop cooler on there and dump 300 watts into the CPU, can I get that all core? Is that gonna be a thing? And I don't that, know. Well, this is the thing too with a single core, is it gonna be like 
is that 4.7 gigahertz going to be that momentarily, you know, boost that even if you got an all core of 4.4, for instance, so I'm, I'm thinking is of, that going to be faster on the single threaded speeds? I'm you thinking know? about the 2700X and the 2990. Yeah. So the 2700X, there's not really any additional overclocking beyond PBO. Like I couldn't, like I have a good board that unlocks PBO and XFR, it's basically fine. Um, but the 2990, that CPU is breathtaking when you let it stretch its legs by using like 350 watts. Yeah. Breathtaking, 32 <laughs> cores. <laughs> if you let it overclock, you can also see your power meter go up. <laughs> I don't can... care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of do. <laughs> but, but that's, no, it's good to see that. You got the 16 core though, the mainstream. I think at $749 though, moving in, yeah. how many mainstream gamers are going to want to adopt that? I mean, that's a lot of cores. Like, Not gamers, I, I content yeah. creators. And so they were pitching it as the fir world's first gaming CPU. So I was a little bit skeptical of it. I think the 12 core is going to be more practical since it has the same amount of level three cash. So it's a, it's a slightly less because you get less on because you got less cores, but that doesn't really matter. For people that are streaming, like super intense gamers, that you got a lot of background processes, the 12 core is going to win because you got the split cache. So yeah. you know two groups of 16 meg plus the L1. Uh, I mean L2. So you've got a lot of cash there for background processes. One of the one of the places where Intel struggles is when you've got like if you're running 7-zip, like I'm going to recompress my movies and run Handbrake or something, and then you want to go play a game. Most systems can't balance that workload really well, but that's actually something Ryzen balances really well because the cache is split. Yeah, I, well, I mean the the system they've really worked on it this time. I've noticed they've really been talking about how they've redesigned the cores and. I mean to be clear. You know, don't pre-order. We need to actually test everything, and you know, certainly AMD is going to put their best foot forward in terms of the demos. We did get to go hands-on with a lot of stuff, which is cool. At least I get to play with some stuff, and you get to play with some stuff. And it's not like super hands-on because it's like I want it on a test bench. It's just here's some systems you can actually see and touch. Well, that's what my going into this, like, I think the 12 and 16 cores, I mean, 749 bucks, it's a lot of money for a CPU. Yeah. And that's when you start to get into that. You realize, okay, the value's there if you can utilize the 16 cores. But how many people are actually going to utilize that many cores? So that's why I was saying the 8 core, the 329, plus having 7 nanometer, all the new updates, I think that's going to be the best play going in. I'm, but, thinking, I'm thinking about, like, the 329 and, like, the Tomahawk B450, and it's like, eh. Yeah, it's not bad. So that's why I really, I really like, you do lose PCIe 4.0 though, going with the B450, but yeah, that's right. And the only demo they realistically showed where PCIe Gen 4 made a difference was that 8K ProRes. I mean, guys, if you're editing on 8K ProRes, you're not I don't know, that Python to... SSD was really tempting. <laughs> but, I mean, again, I want five gigabytes a second. <laughs> But again, that's like geared towards a yeah. person who's got a lot of money yeah. if they've got an 8K red. You can so, get some of the cheaper, like two terabyte NVMEs for like 150 bucks. And they're not the fastest, but two terabytes. But they still work on PCI Gen 3. They're only Gen 3, yeah, they're not so, Gen 4. So on that B450, it works great. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like you really sort of got the feature set there that's geared up towards much more expensive equipment, but how many people are gonna want to adopt that uh, yeah. Is it a little bit too much too soon? But I know they want to put their best foot forward, and I know they're doing a great job, but we still got to test all this stuff out in the real world. Strike while the iron's hot, or in yeah. this case, while Intel is fumbling and stumbling. But I mean, coming out of, coming out of Computex, AMD really put the foot forward, had a blast, and then Intel didn't really have a response. No, they've got the 9900 the KS. That's going to yeah. be 95 <laughs> watts and 5 gigahertz all cores. So, and so they didn't, well, they didn't have 10th gen desktop he CPUs. He said sarcastically. Well, that's what, I mean, they didn't have the 10th gen desktop CPUs. They announced their laptops and it was like, people were like, where's the desktop CPUs? Where's your count? Well, we heard from the engineers at the AMD thing and it was like, look, we expect, we expected the seven nanometer process to be a regression. And so like the material scientists around the world are gonna be like, for this lithography process, the R value, the resistance value of the wires in silicon is gonna increase higher clocks is going to be really hard and so intel has addressed that with like the ipc uplift they were like okay look we're intel uh we can't get the clocks as high on our 10 nanometer processes 14 nanometers 
This is a problem everybody's going to have because it's a material science problem. So we don't need to worry about this because it's a material science problem. And then TSMC is like, what? <laughs> and now everything is like, you know, five gigahertz. That's pretty good. I mean, like, that's well, going approaching in. Approaching five gigahertz. But do you think AMD, like, they said they took risks. And I think that's what they were talking about when they yeah. said they were taking risks. They didn't know seven, yeah. how seven nanometer would turn out. And so when they said we were taking risks, I kind of automatically thought, yeah, you kind of got lucky that seven nanometer was able to go higher than 14 nanometer, even on their own CPU architecture. So I've always said there's this relationship between cache and clock speed. And it's a little weird with AMD because their L3 is a victim cache, which is not the best kind of cache, but it's pretty straightforward to implement. And they've done some stuff to make it not as terrible as just a vanilla victim cache. But I think they were probably planning in their architecture uh, for the massive, massive L3 increase as a way to offset the lack of being able to do the clocks. But TSMC gave them a way to be able to do the clocks. So they got the process shrink, which should have taken away clocks, but they were able to claw back the clocks, but they've got the enlarged cache and all of the other technology that they plan to do to offset the loss in clock speed, the IPC uplift. Because Intel, that's what they did. They were 18% IPC yeah. up, but they didn't, Intel didn't manage to claw the clocks back. Well, plus you, got, plus you got their clock speeds on 14 nanometer yeah. already like right up there. It doesn't, get any, <laughs> it doesn't get any higher than that. I think seven nanometer plus too is going to have a little bit more headroom than most people expect because TSMC seems to be on the ball here with the material science. They so. do actually, that's very true. And so I think, I think though we are seeing kind of, it's great because we've got this time around with the 3000, we've got a tick and a talk in yeah. one. And I think that's the that's why I'm excited. Yeah. Because I think it's, for a long time, we've been getting fed tick, tick, talk. Tiny incremental tick, tick, improvements. Tick, tick, talk. Tick, tick, talk. And it's, yeah, now we're getting with 3000, like, the both at the same time. And that's why people are just so excited. Yeah. You've got the tick and the talk right at the same time. I'm kind of, like, thinking this will be one of the best generations in recent times for gamers, for content created for everyone, really. You know, in my mythological parallel universe, uh, AMD and Samsung also become best buds from working on the mobile stuff. Because Samsung has got these really cool fabs, too. And so maybe we can see some cool AMD-Samsung collaborations in the future with Samsung's material science. And then at that point, it's basically the world versus Intel. So, ooh, maybe bad. <laughs> might be a bad thing, might be a good thing, because then they can get their shaft into gear. <laughs> And start giving oh, us... I see what you did there, Samsung yeah. gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they can start giving us some gains. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Like I said in my previous video, if you guys haven't seen that one, for the GPUs, at the end of the day, it's competition. When AMD push hard, we want to see Intel push harder back so we get better value. But it seems like Intel won't have an answer for Ryzen 3000 for quite some time yet. If the 9900KS is the best they got, they got problems. Put it that way. So you got a 12 core coming out at the same price and it's got better IPC. Apparently it's gonna have even better IPC than Intel's. You know, I bought a 7900X for $1,000 and that was a terrible investment. That CPU has not held its value at all. It was $1,000. And that like the 9900K was 500 and that came out like a year later and that outperforms, that's a 10 core, but the eight core outperforms the 10 core by a lot. So I'm just wondering, Wendell, how much could I buy it off you for, for now? <laughs> Like $300. <laughs> <laughs> All right, deal. I've done it. <laughs> so, it's de -lit it. A little scratch and dent. Don't mind. Don't mind. But uh, we've also got, I mean, me and uh, Wendell go way back when we talking about the old school Xeons, the value they possess. Yeah, the 1365. So we're going to see, another thing too, is we're going to see the Ryzen 3000 series will bring down All the, the used market prices. prices. And so I'm looking forward to giving you guys some Ryzen deal hunting, those, whatever. Those i7 2600s are going to be worth about $3.50. Yeah, and so well, that's the beauty of it all. So we're going to see everyone wins out of this new Ryzen 3000 announcement. People who want the best price performance win. People who want value for money win. People who want used price performance. Everybody wins. So that's just the awesome thing coming out of Yay, it. Yay, competition. Anyway, guys, that about wraps up our coverage here at the Gaming Next Horizon. I don't even know which way it goes. Next Gaming Horizon. I'll say one other thing. 
they snuck a seven in a in a Z to be like seven nanometers because it was like gold and silver. It's sort of weird. But the the display that they had was so low contrast you couldn't really tell. But Navi was the only other thing. There's gonna be a lot of people that are disappointed that there's not an answer for the 2080 Ti. But listen, the middle of the market is important. Like the Polaris was insanely profitable for AMD. Insanely profitable. And Navi as the next Polaris. Looking pretty good, but we got to get that on the benchmarks. Yeah, get that on the bench. Definitely have to get that on the bench, uh, on the on the bench table, and start benchmarking it. Not because, an answer for the 2080 Ti, but most people are not buying a 2080 Ti. Well, the whole thing I was told was they developed that with Microsoft as well. That was, the main purpose of Navi now, as is revealed, was the next gen consoles. That was the main purpose of Navi, and so what we're getting on the desktop is sort of like the augmented benefits from that console R and D. And so whether we'll see a big Navi, I mean, hopefully we will, but yeah. who knows when, no because idea. the consoles came first and that's the production of the consoles. So Legit, we have no idea. But yeah, I'm looking forward to testing it out. I mean, it's not like going to be groundbreaking like the Ryzen 3000 is, but at the same time, it's still good to have that option there now as something that can compete with the RTX 2060 and 2070. So that's what we're looking at. And also let us know guys, what you think of the new Ryzen 3000 product stack here. What is your favorite CPU coming into the event? What is your favorite CPU coming out of the event? I'm gonna ask Wendell, what's his favorite skew of the stack? I think my favorite for everybody, like for my audience probably is Ryzen 5. The six core Ryzen 5, maybe- X or non X? X. Yep. And, uh, but the 3700X, uh, that's probably the best value for yeah. horsepower, but if you just want a powerful machine that's basically future-proof for the next three years, probably Ryzen 5. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, six cores, 12 threads is still relevant for practically everyone that's just playing games and yeah. doing a little bit of this and that. I just think, you know, you always love to get that cookie-cutter value, money, value for money build, and I think 16 gigabytes DDR4, A cores, 16 threads, B450 yeah. is gonna be where it's 65 at. watts can yeah. be super quiet. Well, you're gonna have that really good cooler that you will be able to overclock that 3700X yeah. on and get yeah. pretty much the same results as the 399 CPU, yeah. 3800X. So that's why I'm calling that one as my favorite. Uh, also going in, what do you think with the two month delay on the 3950X before we get on out of here? I thought that was, like, no one expected that. No one no. called that. I thought the delay was gonna be longer it's than two good. months. It's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's probably fine. That, that explains the Threadripper roadmap thing too, I think. So yeah, they get people ready for Threadripper, and then the, yeah, you've got a teaser there. If you like, want more cores, more threads, then you can still go up again. Hey, you just bought a 12 core. Le Lisa just... Sue has said that Threadripper is definitely not dead, but more than 16 cores, it looks like. Well, or maybe 16 cores is the entry level. But you think maybe they're just giving the real hardcore enthusiasts a bit of a stepping stone, buy the 12 core, then buy the 16 core, then buy the 64 core. Yeah. So it's sort of exponentially. Yeah, because the people that really need Threadripper are going to have a lot of peripherals and a lot of other stuff. But, you know, for even for video capture, having that PCI Express 4 linked to the chipset, that helps a lot with video capture too. I know, you're into all, you're into extracting all those uh, extra nitty lanes. gritties out of the... I need <laughs> all my peripherals. <laughs> need <laughs> the peripherals. Out of those extra lanes and everything. Some of the stuff that Wendell does is absolutely amazing, guys. So big thanks for him to featuring on this video and also check his channel out, Level 1 Techs. Links in description below. Thanks and, for having me, it's all good. Yeah, and if you have any questions for Wendell, drop a question in the comment section below or also let us know, guys, in the comment section below, what is your favorite Ryzen CPU coming out of this? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. Do you want to do the outro? This it's, is Tech Yes City. Peace out for now. Bye. Peace out for now and bye. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs>